Russell, this hurts me. We got nothing in common. You played an unethical game. Admittedly played an unethical game. But you sit there proud of it. Natalie, people will call you weak. People will say that you are undeserving. Why are those characteristics any less admirable as lying, cheating, and stealing? Why does he get a free pass, but your wrong way of playing is admonished? You would say that you are probably the least deserving of the title of Soul Survivor. But maybe, just maybe, in an environment filled with arrogance, delusional entitlement, maybe the person who thinks that she's least deserving is probably the most. You got my vote. I hope you get four more. Congratulations. Every season of Survivor is a story. There are main characters, sidekicks, comic reliefs, and villains. A good season of Survivor tells a compelling story that has you rooting for someone and against someone else in hopes that it all ends in a satisfying conclusion. Each story that we look at together will go through one character's journey from beginning to end, from the time they're introduced until they inevitably get their torch snuffed or win the game. We will look at every character moment and strategic move to determine whether they were a hero or a villain and whether they were a good or bad strategist. And with that, welcome to Once Upon an Island. For reference, we are only observing what the TV show is showing us and what story is being told through the show. No future seasons will be mentioned as the story and characters here have no idea about what happens in those future seasons. Secret scenes may be included to flesh out the story and all character moments and strategic moves are interpreted with the mindset of what the story is trying to tell us. And now with that, 39 days, 20 people, one survivor. Natalie White, a 26-year-old pharmaceutical saleswoman from Arkansas, was a castaway on season 19, Survivor Samoa, but she isn't just a castaway, she wins, and it isn't even close. I say this because I feel like that knowledge and mindset is important to remember while watching her story unfold. So with that, this is Survivor's first visit to Samoa, and what a beautiful location it is. This season features 20 all-new players split onto the yellow Foa Foa tribe and the purple Galoo. Natalie's on the yellow Foa Foa tribe and this season has a new twist. Both tribes are forced to elect a leader. And man, is it about time Survivor made this a game mechanic since Jeff loves talking about it at Tribal so, so much. Mick is elected leader for Foa Foa and Russell Swan is elected leader for Galoo. And Foa Foa wins a reward with Jeff saying, Galoo, you are definitely the underdog tribe. Upon arriving at their camp, it takes mm, about like one minute to realize that Mick was the wrong choice to be their leader. I don't know, do you think we should do water yet or wait till tomorrow? Uh, he's, I mean, not that he's gonna, to... yeah, I don't know if we need, but it wouldn't hurt, you know, after, yeah, I think, uh, some, yeah, well, um, uh, the captain leader, Mick, he's doing a very bad job. He sucks. He, he can't even talk to anybody hardly, you know, he, he's not organized. He's not a leader. Uh, you know, he, he doesn't know how to make good decisions. The camp's a piece of crap, but hey, I, I say a good job because I don't want to do nothing. I didn't come here to work. I came here to play. You got to talk about lines uh, as soon as you step on this island. So my strategy is to be able to have a secret alliance with each one of these dumb girls. We can have something like a secret alliance. Okay. You know, the most important thing is honesty on here. So we can be strong for the beginning. We can look back at this moment right now <laughs> and say we did it from the beginning, right. from day one. I'll trust you. So, do I have that same trust with you? Yes. I like to call it my dumbass girl alliance. It's just gonna be me and you. All right. I told them exactly the same thing, and I believe they're just gullible enough to believe it. Ah, uh, what just happened? Russell is a nut, and the show paints these young women, which includes Natalie, as dumb just because Russell perceives them that way. He doesn't even know them. Good on Natalie, though, for just going with the flow and saying yes. However, strange occurrences start happening that very night, and while everyone is sleeping, their water in their canteens disappears, and Jason's socks have suddenly been burned in the fire? What? No one suspects sabotage, though, 
even though it is. And the saboteur is Russell. Speaking of which, that night, him, Ashley, and Natalie are all cuddling in the secret scene. Oh, by the way, I'm happily married. <laughs> And I have the best boyfriend in the world. Justin, and you and guys I miss cuddle you. like you've yeah, been married good, good for luck 10 with that, years. Yo, <laughs> what I do out here, my mom's probably gonna be pretty damn embarrassed. My wife's probably gonna be pissed off. Close your eyes and think it's a warm place. Who you sleep with is who you feel close to in this game. The next day at the immunity challenge, Ben of the Fofo -fo tribe talks mad smack to Galoo. But uh, it makes them look silly because they then immediately lose. Back at camp, Russell's acting a bit nutty when he goes around telling everyone that Marisa threatened him and she needs to go. Natalie's like, okay, whatever, and she fist bumps him. But then the older lady on their tribe, Betsy, says, Natalie, just keep an eye out for Russell. I wouldn't trust Russ. Why do you say that? Oh, I just wouldn't. Well, tell me why. Give me a reason. Oh, I don't know why. A woman's intuition. Mind you that that scene takes place only moments after Russell says he is the puppet master and everyone else here is stupid. So we go to tribal council where everyone votes and... I'm the one that got the ball rolling to get you out of here. If you play with fire, you'll get burned. I'm voting for Marissa and I really, really hate this. Um, and it was for a couple of reasons. First and foremost, um, it was the majority and also I did tell Mike today I would not vote for him, which again, but you um, and the majority, but I think you're an awesome competitor and uh, I think this will probably uh, hurt our team, so I'm sorry. First person voted out of Survivor Samoa, Marisa. Marisa, the tribe has spoken. That's it for the premiere, and the show seems very interested in Russell Hance, and not really anyone else on the Fofo -fo tribe. In terms of Natalie, we learn that she has a boyfriend only due to a secret scene, and Russell has called her dumb. When will the show start to portray her winter story? Hopefully soon. By the way, if you want to pick what I cover for videos and watch everything up to six months early, then consider joining my Once Upon an Island Patreon. You can cancel at any time, and there is a 15% discount if you do sign up for one year. Thank you for your support. I don't normally do this, but this season, it is especially important to show how one player dominates the storytelling of the season, and episode 2's opening narration has Jeff Probst saying, Russell is Foe Foe's biggest problem. We then go to camp, and for some odd reason, Russell is looking up the tree by their camp. He says he's looking for an idol, but unless you're Gary Hogaboom, no one finds idols without clues. Then, in a secret scene, we see the tribe find a crap ton of papaya, and Natalie says, Finally, we won't starve. We then go to the Roar Challenge, Schmergen Brawl. It's a brutal mix of basketball and football where we see Laura of Galoo pulling Natalie's top down and choking her. Jeff says, hold up, no more warnings. Anyone else doing anything like that and I kick you out. So of course, what better way to introduce you to Ben of Foa Foa as he kicks Russell Swan in the shin and says, I'm not sorry, I'm an outlaw. You know, something like a 15 year old would do and not a 28 year old man. They do lose immunity and unfortunately Mike Barassi of their tribe is pulled due to medical reasons from the game. They are bleeding numbers fast and back at camp, Galoo got to send one of their own players to Foa Foa for the day and they sent Yasmin, which leads into... I don't know how you feeling about me, but let's just say I'm not the enemy. Not only that, I'm here to help you guys strategize because to me, I don't like a not fair fight. It's almost like... Why be matched up with people that's not matched up with the right people? Because then it's like taking candy from a baby. Who the hell wants to do that? That don't boost my self-esteem. You know what I'm saying? That make me seem like I really did something that was a cakewalk. She's full of crap. She comes over here to her camp, disrespects us, calls us babies, tells us how we can win a challenge if we listen to her. She come to the wrong camp. She ain't get nothing but disrespect for me from now on. And you know what? She's going to pay for that statement. I promise you. It has been an episode and a half and Yasmin's like, yeah, you all are trash. This causes Ben to say something very inappropriate. He says she is ghetto trash who eats ketchup sandwiches. A very insensitive racial remark for sure. And to compound this, Ben is just being the worst. He stays up all night chopping bamboo and keeps everyone awake. So obviously this dude has to be voted off next, right? Wrong. Russell says Betsy is going because she threatened him too. What? Betsy senses something is up and in this secret scene she talks to Natalie. If I was the one on the chopping block, would you tell me? Or is that too much to ask? Is that putting you in too much of a horrible position? I would have to think on that. I mean, I, I don't know. That's the whole thing is I just, 
I don't like to be put in those situations. Period. I wouldn't rat you out. I wouldn't say, oh. I would just want to know. You would just want to I know. would just want to know. Natalie wouldn't tell me that my head was on the chopping block. So that right then I knew that I was the next to go. Since Natalie is going to win and the show wants you to like the winner most of the time, I think this was cut to help her image. Betsy then says, Natalie, trust your gut. Pick me over Ben. And speaking of Ben, we go to tribal council and he says, I kicked Russell Swan on purpose. And I think Yasmin is ghetto trash. That's right. He says that two times. And he then high fives Russell Hans. Wow. Ben even has the gall to say, I don't start fights. I only finish them. Yeah, like when you kicked Russell Swan in the shin. So everyone goes to vote and... You should have took my invitation while you could, but you didn't. That's why you're going home tonight. Bye bye. Betsy, I'm voting for you. No hard feelings. Uh, it was the majority. Second person voted out of Survivor Samoa. Betsy. Betsy. Trump has spoken. Voting on Betsy over Ben is so evil. I don't care who you are. That was just an evil decision. Episode three starts with Jeff saying that losing is frustrating everyone at Foa Foa, except Russell. Russell loves it. And his manipulation skills work on everyone. Not true. But this is what the show wants you to think. And this is what they're saying in their recaps of each episode. We then see Natalie and Russell talk and... Natalie, how you feel? I feel good. How you feel about last night? Oh, it's always brutal, but it was the... I mean, it was the majority, it was the plan, so. Do you, do you have any in, in mind who you would want to? Gosh. Nobody here is playing the game. Nobody is playing the game but me on my tribe. Not one person, and it is crazy. Let's, I think we should definitely see how today goes before we start discussing this. Well, we today's to just a reward, I hope. I don't, this might be the worst group in history, and I might be the best. I'm going to have them all under control like zombies walking around. Again, Natalie has done nothing wrong, but the editing here tells you that she is dumb and Russell is the only intelligent player on the entire tribe. On a lighter note, Natalie mentions she hasn't pooped yet and is annoyed by this, which I find kind of funny. We then see Ben pick a fight with Ashley, what else is new with this guy, and she talks to Natalie for comfort, and Natalie does an excellent job just being her friend. But then Foa Foa loses immunity again. And this time Shambo is sent to their tribe from Galoo. But unlike Yasmin, she's actually super friendly and says, Galoo is crazy. Over there, they're doing yoga. And the people at Foa Foa are like, they have time to do yoga? We don't have time for stuff like that. And some are wondering if Shambo is being genuine or if she's just playing with them because she could just be spreading lies to make it seem like she's not part of Galoo and she very much is. But then the talks of who is to be voted out next comes to a head when Jason says, Ben's out of here. I mean, it's like this. If it's not, then I'm leaving. So, I, so everybody can make a decision. Why would you? I'm just saying. Like, I'm gonna put it out there like that. That's my ultimatum. Oh, wait, that's fine, Natalie. If I get kicked out, I'm leaving you my sweater oh, and my tennis shoes. Okay? Jason's like, it's either me or him. So, no, it's either me or him. No, no, no. Like, yeah, but don't worry about it. But as we should know by now, who does Russell want out? Well, he wants. Ashley and I am so confused is this not one of the people he said he wanted to align with in the beginning he's voting off all the girls we then go to tribal council where Jason calls out Ben's blatant racism good for him and Natalie's in the middle while they bicker and go at it so finally everyone votes and I didn't want to have to do this man but I have no choice now see you in Hollywood I am voting for Ben because this is what my alliance wants third person voted out of Survivor Samoa Ben. Ben? Travis spoken. Time for you to go. Good. Bye bye, Ben. Episode four has begun and Foa Foa is down 10 to six. Galoo hasn't lost anyone yet. This is not good. Once again, this episode starts off with Jeff narrating all about Russell, ignoring the other 15 players in the game. When Jeff says he is a force to be reckoned with, despite having zero influence over the prior episode's vote, he wanted Ben to stay. Foa Foa then continues their losing streak by not getting the chicken reward. And Russell says, you know what? I am over Jason as my number two. From now on, I'm replacing him with Natalie. My true alliance it changes all the time i told jason i'll bring him to the top two but i don't know that i can count on jason to stay in the game i need somebody to be able to help me to the final two so i would have to take somebody like natalie with me because she's gonna ride my coattails the whole way she's too stupid to do it by herself she needs me so i could stand up there and say she followed my coattails this whole way 
She rode me like a horse. Russell and I have talked about since the first day about being the final two at the end. So at this point, I'm kind of his wingman, I guess you could say. I definitely think people underestimate me. And I want them to think that, hey, it's really smart for them to take me to the end because they can beat me. You know, use that to my advantage. And if it comes down to me or him, I know I can beat Russell in the very end. Because I would say a lot of other people in the tribe have really been rubbed the wrong way by him. So I'm just trying to not ruffle feathers, steer clear, build good relationships, which is what I'm good at. It's about flipping time we got to hear what Natalie is thinking. They gave her zero confessionals in the first three episodes, while Russell got 27. More than two thirds of this cast will not get 27 confessionals for the whole season, and that's what he got in three episodes. At the immunity challenge, Natalie's in the hero position for her tribe as she races to stack the blocks faster than Galoo, and they win. But episode five quickly destroys any momentum Fofo might have gotten from that win when Ashley blows the reward challenge and back at camp while everyone else is dunking on Ashley for losing Natalie is the only one being kind I tried I mean you did so, you know what you did so good I'm really proud of you you stepped it up for sure I mean honestly you're helping well, me get through it after the challenge Ashley felt horrible that you know she felt like it was her fault but you know what we're kind of kind of like sisters so we've kind of been able to talk each other through that and encourage each other so you know, I just want to make her feel better about it. I'm so happy you're out here with me. I'm so happy you're out here. You have no idea. With Galoo winning that reward challenge, they get to send someone to Fofo -fo again, and they send Chambo, who is completely over Galoo and says, Hey guys, I have a clue to the hidden immunity idol. Let me share it with you all. Nice. However, this clue points to the tree that Russell was digging in during episode two, and somehow everyone comes to the conclusion that Ben found the idol and was voted out with it in his pocket, when we know Russell actually has it. Foa Foa then loses immunity. Great, and back at camp, it is raining even harder than before. With everyone stuck in the shelter, no one can get out and talk strategy. So we go to tribal council, where... You're lazy. You can't think for yourself. You can't do for yourself. And that's why you gotta go home. And that's because of me, you're going home. I'm out here playing for one million dollars. Never trust me. Ashley, I'm voting for you because uh, this is what my core alliance went with. This is the hardest vote I think I'll make in the entire game. I'm sorry. Love you, girl. You are awesome. Fifth person voted out of Survivor Samoa. Ashley. Ashley, the tribe has spoken. Are you seeing the difference between how Natalie talks about people and how Russell talks about them? Because whether they say it to their face or not, those thoughts pervade your mind and will affect how you treat someone. Anyways, Foa Foa is down 9 to 5, and the episode begins with Jeff saying Russell has no friends, only targets. Ain't that the truth? We are now on to day 5 of continuous rain, and people are losing it, which I would be as well. We then go to the challenge, where... Left, Russ, left, Russ, left, 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 left! Hold on. <laughs> no ball. idea ball. where he's at right okay. now. He's down. He's down. Up. The ball is right. Whoa. Whoa. Russell, are you with me? Russ, are you okay? Russ? Russ? Russ, are you with us? Hold on. Russ? Russell. Russ, talk to me. Russ, talk to me. Russell, Russell, wake up, mate. Wake up. You there? Huh? Yeah. Mm hmm. Do you remember what just happened? His heart rate was 97 when we sat him up, and now it's 68. Okay. And it dropped. It dropped like really that. suddenly. Don't feel comfortable getting him in. Not with his heart doing what it's doing. The leader of Galoo is out, the good Russell, and tribal council is called off. It is a down day for everyone, and Jason says the chances of Fofo -fo winning this thing are so low. He says at this rate, he doesn't even think the tribe's gonna make it past day 21. And Natalie says, I am confident we can reach the end. Our opening narration for episode seven has Jeff saying, while everyone else is suffering in the rain, Russell is thriving. Foa Foa then loses reward, and this time Laura Moret is sent to their camp from Galoo. We first see Russell try to trick her by pretending to be a Christian because he identifies that's what Laura is and he thinks he can he can get in with her that way. But then when Laura talks to Natalie. We have a good group of our pastor and his wife and a bunch of the other friends have him. We're not like these yeah. really badass as long as we have a flame, like we're right on Harley's down to Starbucks and get a coffee. I didn't get to finish. Well, it was like an inspirational. It was a fairly small book. It had little chapters. Um, about being positive and, you know, uplifting, and I was just like, 
Yeah, this is like a crisis. And they're talking about their faith in books. Also, I understand we have a guest, but they're talking about book of the month clubs. Yeah. Damn. Liz is so stupid. I don't even see how she can walk without falling down. This is ridiculous. If we merge, we need somebody on the inside. And Natalie's doing a good job talking to Laura around the camp. So I have to keep Natalie for my little toy. You know, she has to be there for me so I can manipulate her little mind and do what I want her to do. When it comes to this game, you better be street smart. And Liz has a mouth on her, and I don't think she knows when to shut up. So uh, I'm going to keep my eye on her. That was 100% more genuine than what we just saw prior with Russell, thinking he can identify someone's weakness and prey on it. Well, prepare to be shocked because, uh... Foa Foa loses immunity and Russell tells Natalie that it's between her and Liz, but he wants Liz out. Natalie remains very calm when hearing her name as an option and at tribal council, Jeff asks about what this tribe's outlook is now that they're going to be down to only four members. And Natalie says there's no need for negativity. They need to remain positive. So everyone goes to vote and you're the weakest link when it comes to trust. That's why I got to get rid of you. If the merge happens, I know you'll flip flop. Liz, I'm voting for you because this was uh, what the group decided. Sixth person voted out of Survivor Samoa. Liz. Liz, the tribe has spoken. Time for you to go. Full full, it just needs a break, you know? And I think that's why um, I probably had to go. I mean, just strategically, it made sense for Natalie to stay in case there is a merge. Diplomatically, Natalie has made some strides with Laura, so it was a very strategic move on Foa Foa's part. So in that sense, it's not that surprising that I, you know, that they voted me out. Interesting that Liz recognizes the importance of Natalie's connection to Laura she made in the short time they were there together. That was pulled from Liz's extended final words, by the way, after she was voted out. Episode eight begins and color me surprised, Jeff's opening narration gives credit to Natalie for her interactions with Laura. Wow, does Jeff know that's not what Russell's name is? It's not Natalie. Anyways, everyone on Foa Foa suspects the merge is soon and so when they get tree mail. <laughs> Congratulations, Fofo and Galoo. You are now on track. Galoo is up eight to four, and not since Survivor Marquesas, aka season four with Boston Rob, has a tribe had this much of a lead over another one going into the merge. I know what you're thinking. What about Oolong in season 10? Technically it wasn't a merge. So we're kind of in unprecedented territory because even in Marquesas, they had tribe swap. Here, there was no tribe swap. Foa Foa has a lot of work on their hands, especially Natalie. We then see everyone from the new merge tribe on the old Galoo beach and Natalie and Laura reconnect. The Galoo camp. I love it. It's awesome. I feel like I'm at the Hilton. You know, at Foa Foa, we had absolutely nothing. Here at Galoo, there's blankets, pillows. Everybody, it really seems like a family. I'll show you where our water and stuff is. Okay. Laura kind of took me under her wing. Uh, she was kind of like mother hen, showing me around. And it was really nice because it was really important for me to talk to Laura to find cracks in this group. Make no mistake, there are cracks. It's just, are there enough cracks and big enough cracks to get the numbers on our side. What's interesting is how that positive interaction is immediately contrasted with a scene between Russell and Laura being at odds because Russell's trying to manipulate her and he's lying to her constantly. Shambo then says that if Foa Foa will vote out Laura, she's gonna vote with them. And hey oh, that would make the numbers seven to five, which is better, but still not enough to flip this thing. However, Laura does win immunity, squashing that plan. And Eric of the Old Galoo laughs and says, these Foa Foa members can't win anything. He then talks to them and. I think there's a way for the three of you to stay in the game tonight. The three of you guys helped for Monica then definitely the three of you will stay, and I'm pretty sure Russell will stay anyway. So, best interest would be the three of you to vote the same way and not tell us. We want him to think that he's going home tonight. That way he plays the island. What you need to know, you know. You choose a different route, there'll be a different outcome. I can't guarantee the four of you are here tomorrow. Wow. What a jerk hole. It's like they're a group of children and he's the boss. Jason says, screw that guy, let's get him out. So Natalie goes and talks to Laura and. Eric came to us and he was like, well, y'all four need to report. He's freaking out. Why is he freaking out? He wants all of the girls gone. I don't trust Eric. I'll give him a kid. Hey, Kel, what's up? Okay. 
Yeah, she wants to know if they can Think of it this way, Lou still has plenty of people. Plenty. Kelly and Laura, I just basically let them know that Eric needed to go now. We have four people, they have eight. It's not a big deal if they lose one. What I failed to mention before is that Laura leads the Galoo women. Monica and Kelly are kind of her lackeys. When Russell Swan got medically evacuated, she basically became the new unofficial leader of this tribe. And Natalie planting that seed in her is huge. It was the right person to do it with and her connection with her is why it will even work. Natalie tells Russell what she did and he's like, yeah, okay. I doubt anything you said made an impact, Natalie. So at Tribal Council, everyone votes and... Don't think I know what, don't think I don't know what y'all doing. This is the best blind side that never happened. Eric, I'm voting for you and I really hope that uh, everybody does what they say they're gonna do. Sorry, E, but your own paranoia was your demise. The minute that you decided to go against Galu and turn against the girls, you had to go. If I know the heaven, I might as well play it. This is a hidden immunity idol. Any votes cast for Russell tonight will not count. First vote, Jason. Jason. Two votes, Jason. Eric. Eric. Two votes, Jason. Two votes, Eric. Eric. That's three votes, Eric. 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 That's five votes, Eric. Eric. Six votes, Eric. Seventh person voted out of Survivor Samoa and the first member of our jury. Eric, Eric, Trump has spoken. Galoo just lost a member and they are now only up seven to four and what a huge vote off that was. Without Natalie doing what she did, they would have voted for her, Mick or Jason. Since Russell was dumb enough to tell every single Galoo member he had an idol so they weren't gonna vote for him, he was like a giddy child looking for affirmation. Heck, in the opening narration for episode nine, Jeff gives Natalie all the credit. So now with Natalie at the peak of her power. Oh my word, no. So I kind of went out for a walk and I stumbled upon this rat or this mouse. Oh gosh. Okay. Just turn around. Eat your eat your snack. Eat your snack. Eat your snack. Eat your snack, buddy. Oh gosh. Oh my word. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, this is pitiful. Oh my gosh. Oh Lord, have mercy. Oh my word. Um, I have something to show y'all. What do you got? A rat. Uh I oh, swear, it is, y'all, I swear. Russell. Right. Natalie walks into camp with this rat and a coconut. We're all just shocked. Did you catch that? Get it? Well, Got it? I killed it. I hit it with a stick and then the rock. Are I just don't know. Yeah. She came into this game, the Southern Belle, you know, very sweet, nice girl, but definitely not the rough and tumble survivor type. Beef jerky. Oh, that's so good. It kind of just tastes like chicken. On so many levels, I'm proud of Natalie out here. You know, from what I knew about her coming in to where she is now, I think she's changed a lot over the last 23 days, and I'm, I'm really happy for her. I am shocked they spent a whole two minutes of the episode dedicated to Natalie killing a rat. I mean, I didn't show all two minutes, but trust me, two minutes out of a 42 minute episode for that, that's pretty big. Well, Shambo says, if Laura loses immunity, then I will flip and vote her out. So it is incredibly disappointing when Laura does win immunity again, and now Foa Foa is back in their crap spot again but this time it won't be natalie who saves the day it will have to be russell because believe it or not he found another idol and everyone says let's make sure he is the target so at tribal council jeff is completely baffled when natalie is nice about how she feels welcomed by galoo and when he questions why she says i would rather be friends with them than enemies so when everyone goes to vote you just got caught up at the wrong place in the wrong time I ain't finished playing just yet. Keep hope alive. This is an idol. Any votes cast against Russell will not count. First vote. Russell does not count. Russell does not count. Russell, that's three votes. Russell, none of them count. Russell does not count. Russell does not count. Russell does not count. Russell does not count. Kelly. Oh my god. Two votes, Kelly. He just what the hell is what he did. Eighth person voted out of Survivor Samoa and the second member of our jury. Kelly. Kelly, the tribe has spoken. 
you know, I think it was a cheap shot made uh, under the mind of Russell because he thought I was playing too nice and he was too manipulative, you know. He's just a little sneaky man and he's, you know, I, his character is horrible from things he's told me in the game, from things he does in real life. And I don't feel like I deserve to go home at all. You know, I feel like I was playing a game really well and I was playing genuine. And it's just a shame that like a sneaky little rat like Russell would feel the need to like get rid of the genuine player. Kelly is so mad at Russell. Well, 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 that is one vote we know he will not be getting at the end. I wish we had seen what he said to her to have her feeling that way, but I can only show you what I got. Galoo is now only up six to four, but a Shambo flip would even up those numbers. Episode 10 starts with Russell feeling peak cocky as he states that he is now the Picasso of Survivor. He thinks he is making works of art with his strategic play. And to be fair, that idol play was the most votes negated by an idol. In this secret scene, we say how Russell thinks he has this game in the bag already. It feels really good to be aligned with Russell. I mean, he is uh, the most powerful player in this game. He knows that whatever he votes, I vote too. So really, he's got two votes no matter what. Anyway, he wants to, to play it. When it comes down to brass knuckles and it's just me and you and somebody else, you have to swear to me. You ain't gonna think that I'm gonna beat you because I played the game better and vote me off. Swear on Nick. You are gonna start thinking that's a lot of money. Your brain's gonna start working. Who better to take? There's no way she can beat me in votes. She followed and did everything I told her to do. She wouldn't even know how to talk. She might even say, oh, he's right. Give it all to him. You know, she's so sweet. I love it. <laughs> He is so cocky. Natalie's team wins reward along with Russell, and she thanks the fellow Galoo members, whereas Russell's like, they didn't let us win, Natalie. Again, there are massive difference in personalities on display, except this time it's in front of others. On the Sprint phone that I am 100% going to get as soon as this video is done, of course, there is a clue to the idol. But more importantly, if you freeze frame it, you can see who took pictures with who. And I noticed there are quite a few pictures of Dave Ball and Natalie, a connection they haven't shown us, at least not yet. Anyways, they all get a clue to the idol, as I said, and back at camp, Russell gets it, of course. That is three idols in a row. We then see Mick win immunity and hold Holy crap, that means Shambo can finally flip and vote Laura off. Is this really going to happen? Well, everyone goes to vote, and... The other day you told me that I may be faster than you, but you're smarter than me. You see, that's why you're going home tonight. You underestimated me. Laura, I'm voting for you because this is Foa Foa's um, only hope, and this is what we came to an agreement on uh, with Sham. It played an awesome game. Sorry, girl. First vote, Laura. Natalie, one vote Laura, one vote Natalie. Natalie, two votes Natalie. Laura, two votes Laura. Laura, that's three votes Laura. <laughs> Natalie, that's four votes Laura. Natalie, Laura. Natalie, we have a tie. Here's how the tie's gonna work. Laura and Natalie, you will not vote. Everybody else will vote. You can only vote for Laura or Natalie. Unwavering in this decision. Okay, second round, let's see what happens. First vote, Laura. Two votes, Laura. Laura, that's three votes, Laura. Natalie. Natalie. Tied again. Laura, that's four votes, Laura. Three votes, Natalie. One vote left. Ninth person voted out and the third member of our jury. Laura. Laura, the tribe has spoken. It finally happened. Shambo flipped, and on that revote, John flipped to avoid a rock draw. Wow. In the opening narration of the next episode, Jeff says three game-changing events took place and attributes all of them to Russell as if everyone else did nothing. Oh my word. Well, it is now time for the Survivor Auction and unlike some, Natalie wins big. Peanut butter and jelly sandwich. 200. Just bought herself a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, Jeff. She sold to Natalie. Oh my goodness. Look at all this peanut butter. Wow, that's Next item. You've been looking at it. Clean underwear. Clean underwear. 120. Sold to Natalie. Oh, 120 dollars. <laughs> Woo! Woo! <laughs> oh my 
goodness. Does the show want us to think Natalie's extremely hot? Well, that's with the music applied there in that scene. And I'm wondering, would Russell have gotten the same music if he had won it? You be the judge. At the immunity challenge, Jason beats Dave. And back at camp, Natalie congratulates Dave on doing so well, while Russell just kind of stares them down. That's not creepy at all. Now, Shambo says, I want Dave out next. But Russell, being his usual cocky self, says, no way. John is gone because John sussed out that Russell found a third idol. Jason then correctly points out that by flipping on Shambo, we're kind of doing the same thing to her that Galoo did to her that made her feel so burned. But we go to tribal council and... You're a great st strategic player. I could be the only strategic player left. So that's why I have to let you go. John, I'm voting for you because you are a very strategic player and you're a huge threat to uh, Thoa Thoa. So good game. Tenth person voted out and the fourth member of our jury. John. She has no idea what happened. John, tribe has spoken. Close boys. Absolutely ruthless. Not but one episode after he helped them to. The opening narration to the next episode has Jeff saying Russell's on cruise control, mowing down anyone who gets in his way. But then during that narration, we get a flashback to a scene they did not show us on the show. It happened in the recap episode, which is usually never referenced at all, where we see Russell telling Mick that he owns a oil company and is rich. Wait. What? I mean, that seems pretty massive. Why was that cut from the main show and left in the recap episode? Russell's going to get over 100 confessionals this season, and they didn't have time to show us that one. That seems pretty big. Typically, secret scenes have zero bearing on what ultimately happens in the show, and they don't affect anything in the future or in the past that we're going to see. But in this case, this is going to affect things. This is going to affect... Why was it put in the recap? Anyways, Russell lies to Shambo about why John was voted off, and she believes him. And then in a scene that almost seems pointless in the long run... Actually, it, it isn't because it says a lot about Jason and his mentality. What seems innocuous will be important. He tells Brett and Monica that Russell is the bulldog and he is behind the scenes being the smart player who quietly makes moves, which I think shows exactly what he values in a player. At the end of the game, the jury votes for who they think should represent their season and typically people like to see themselves represented in the winner. He also says Russ is rich to plant the seed that the million dollars is not a need for him. See, this is what I mean. Why do they put that in the recap? Then while Natalie's hanging up some undies, Okay. Russell tells her that Dave is next, and she says, cool. So at Tribal Council. You were running around threatening to get me out of the game. That was your biggest mistake in the game. Now I gotta get rid of you. Dave, I'm voting for you. Sorry. Uh, you're hilarious, but uh, this is the majority, and uh, you are a strategic threat. So, good game. 11th person voted out, and the fifth member of our jury. Dave. Dave, the tribe has spoken. Only CGI Brett and Monica remain of the unflipped Galoo members, but all of a sudden Russell says CGI Brett is the biggest threat in the game. He is? CGI Brett is the biggest threat? Okay. We then see Russell also getting mad at Monica as she learns how to get under his skin and causes him to snap. I think you're keeping a lot of threats around. <laughs> I'm just telling you, I mean, you need to put people on your jury that are going to vote for you. I'm surprised you want to put me on the jury. I can make or break you on the jury, really. Jason told me you're a multi-millionaire already. I'm voting based on need. Who needs the money? Monica, she told me you said you're gonna vote me out after I get rid of the idol. She told me what I do for a living. Oh, why would she tell me that? Because she's trying to stay in the game. Russell was so angry. I might have made a mistake and told her what he does for a living. I honestly don't remember. Monica, she had to run her little pie hole. The little bitch needs to be sent home tonight. Well, 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 this is the first blatant time someone who's a part of the jury has gotten the better of Russell. Interesting. Very interesting. He's feeling threatened so much that to compensate, he slaps his hidden immunity idol around his neck as if to say, who's really the boss around here, Monica? And at Tribal Council, CGI Brett says the key to succeeding in this game is humility. So, of course, Russell doesn't hear him say this at all, as him and Monica then beef in front of the whole jury. Monica tells me, if you vote me out, I ain't putting your name down for the million dollars. And I'm going to talk to everybody else, they ain't putting your name down. Well, you know what? You're only making me vote you out now because, because of what you said. You know, Russell came into the merge and basically tried to push a lot of buttons. Mm -hmm. And I haven't seen Russell's buttons pushed, but today he was huffing and puffing all over camp. Did you say this about me? I mean, he was fuming, fuming. Russell, 
little bit of teacher student. She got me pissed off. So if she would have played that hard this entire game, she would be the one in charge right now. Or I could be going home earlier. But I've been playing hard this entire game and I'm still here. Because of idols. Yeah, well, that's playing hard. If you tell me that you're not gonna write my name down for the million dollars if I put you on the jury, that's just gonna only make me wanna vote you out even more. Stupid, stupid little girl, bad strategy. Happy birthday. Monica, happy early birthday. But I'm voting for you because you created all kinds of drama today. That's off to you for trying. Uh, but yeah, we can't have that again. So sorry. Happy early birthday again. Twelfth person voted out the sixth member of our jury. Monica. Monica, the trap is spoken. That public fight is not a good look on Russell. In the very next episode, he goes off on how CGI Brett needs to go. But while he is making enemies of everyone, Natalie and CGI Brett connect in a way that we had only seen her do with Laura Pryor. Ephesians 3, 16 through 19. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. Natalie and I, you know, kind of, come from, I think, a similar walk of life, then I think something like that is a great foundation for a trusting relationship. That you may be filled to the measure of all with the fullness of God. Ephesians 3, 16 through 19. That's good. Oh my gosh, Brett is an absolute sweetheart. I mean, Brett and I have had um, several discussions about the Bible and about some Christian books. Um, I've really enjoyed that, so it's been nice to have that in common. I can't say this for certain, but uh, I think this is when Brett is locked into voting for Natalie at the end. They're actually friends, and Russell lies to him multiple times that we see. Heck, even at the reward challenge, we see her pick CGI Brett for their team, and we see them praying together. And when they lose, Natalie tells the other team to genuinely enjoy their reward. I say genuinely because she's being genuine. Back at camp, we see Natalie and Brett hanging out with Natalie saying, CGI Brett is awesome. And when Russell gets back to camp, he says, Natalie, you got the others worried by picking CGI Brett. Yeah, but can you just play off with them? Because you picked Brett. They freaked out. Everybody, every single person there. Because you did that, they're like, oh, well, they might get together. Mick might be, Mick, no, but yeah. Mick might be. So we got to get rid of Mick. Russell, from the very first day, he told me, I'll take you to the final two if I can trust you. And I was like, you can trust me. I've been completely honest with him, letting him know what's going on. And um, we've kind of been on the same page with everything. So we actually have quite a bit of power. Two brains are better than one. If we can prevent Brett from winning immunity, then today will be a wonderful day. He's a little punk. He's 110 pounds. He's not faster than me. He's not stronger than me. It is done. They say don't get confident in this game. You know what? I'm confident as a hell. By the way, Russell is lying. Shambo doesn't care and Jason cares like a minimal amount. Russell is the paranoid one. I know you're shocked to hear this. CGI Brett then wins immunity and Russell says, well, I guess it's time to vote off Shambo. So when they all go to vote. I gotta get rid of you today because we gotta keep the team strong. And you are the weakest link. First and foremost, we have to get rid of Brett and Mick and Jason. I think I have a better chance of beating Brett and also hey, I'm loyal to uh, Jason, Mick, and Russell. First and foremost, Brett and girls. 13th person voted out, the seventh member of our jury. Shambo. Shambo, the tribe has spoken. Finale time. It is Russell Hans versus Natalie White versus Mick versus Jason versus CGI Brett. The opening narration of the show has Jeff saying everyone takes their cues from Russell Hans, followed by a shot of Natalie smiling and saying how awesome he is. Yes, I get it show. Russell is the greatest thing since Boston Rob, who also didn't win the two seasons he played prior to Russell. But then the cockiness of Russell elevates again when he says, We have to get rid of Brett. It's a shame that I'm set up with these bunch of misfits because I should be here with superstars. You know what's gonna happen if he wins the next one? I ain't gonna better save me. But how would I be next though? Why would I be next? Because the three guys stayed to beat him on the last challenge. Well, that sucks. Well, we just gotta win. 
He's not no, some freaking athlete genius. You know, my whole goal coming into this game was to play the underdog, be underestimated, and just kind of slide through, which is what I've done, and it's gotten me this far. You know, Russell and I had always planned to be in the top. You know, uh, Brett's won two individual immunities. He could possibly win the last two, but what's two immunities? If Jason can win two in a row, anybody can win two in a row. That means absolutely nothing to me. So you telling me he's all of a sudden Superman because he wins two? He, he's not some superstar to me. You start thinking that, you start getting weak in the mind, thinking you can't beat him like you're stepping in the ring with Mike Tyson. He's no Mike Tyson. He's Brett. That superstars line is clearly setting up his return for next season, but the better question is, would Russell actually cut Natalie? I mean, he did cut everyone else out of his dumb girl alliance, that's what he called it, but Natalie's the only person who, all season, he says he could beat at the end and he hasn't turned on. But in worse news, CGI Brett wins immunity number three, and Natalie says, crap, I didn't want to have to vote off a foe of foe member yet, but I guess I don't have a choice. She then talks to Russell about what the plan is, and he says, I'm gonna keep you because there's no way you're beating me at votes. Jason is next. So in this secret scene, we basically see the Betsy scene from earlier, but replaced with Jason. For some reason I'm getting a little nervous about tonight. What do you mean? Well, I mean, we're all on the same page with Mick, right? The plan was the same this morning, right, when we left? Yeah, Mick, if, if Brett wins. Double check with Russell, have you talked to him? Russell, myself, and Mick are all voting for Jason. As far as I know, Jason is voting for Mick and thinks that everybody's voting for Mick. So I did not want to have to face Jason at this point in time. But unfortunately, I, mean, I got stuck, so it was uncomfortable, it was awkward. I kept trying to tell him, go talk to Russell, go talk to Russell. So I didn't want to have to lie to him. Just stick with Mick, okay? Okay. Hey, why be the bearer of bad news when Russell will do it all for fun? Russell then talks to Natalie because he's still kind of debating like he wants Jason, but he also wants Mick. And he's like, what are the pros and cons of voting off each of these guys? And Natalie says, well, Jason probably won't beat CGI Brett at immunity, but Mick might beat us for jury votes. So Russell then lies to Jason and tells him, hey, we're voting off Mick next. So at Tribal Council, everyone votes and... I hate that I have to do this, but man, I gotta keep to my strategic play. I think this is the best move for me to win the game. So I had to do it. Uh, Jason, this has by far been the hardest vote uh, to date. Uh, sorry, but I am voting for you because it was just last minute um, scrambling and we just felt that Meg would have a better shot at uh, beating Brad at the next immunity. Good game. 14th person voted out and the eighth member of our jury. Jason. Jason, tribe has spoken. Brett's a real good dude, you know, and I wonder, like, if this, if, in, a, in a veil of ignorance kind of sense, if I was just looking objectively at each one of them, I think Brett would probably deserve the money more than anybody else, or I'd rather have him have the money than anybody else, but can I go against Fofo and vote against him? I mean, that's the question. I know Jason's talking about CGI Brett in his Ponderosa video, but keep what he says in mind as uh, CGI Brett's not gonna be in the final three to be voted for. So who can replace him? The next day, it's time for the final immunity challenge. Mick drops out first, thanks Mick. Then Natalie drops, so it's Russell versus CGI Brett, and surprisingly, Russell wins. Good. CGI Brett in the final three would have been a guaranteed win for him. Back at camp, Russell is fishing for compliments as he baits Mick and Natalie to stroke his ego. He thinks he has this game won. What has Mick or Natalie done to win over the jury? Nothing in his mind. Mick then gets paranoid. He is going to be voted off next and Natalie comforts him and says, no way, dude, you're fine. So they vote at tribal council and... Hey man, you played a great game. If I wasn't here, you probably would have won it all. But I had to stop you. You know, I'm looking forward to getting together with you and doing some great things outside of this game. Good luck, man. Brett, I'm voting for you uh, because uh, foe foe until the end, and we have no shot at beating you uh, at the final, so good luck. Fifteenth person voted out and the ninth and final member of our jury, Brett. Brett, the tribe has spoken. I, I definitely respect the game that Natalie and Mick played. I mean, they didn't have to be the devilish character, quote unquote, the person that was going around, stirring up trouble, making making big decisions and doing all that. So they played the game with honesty, integrity, which I have mad respect for. And Russell kind of did the dirty work. And 
So, you know, I still have respect for them because they were able to get to where they needed to go, which is standing in the final three, and they still have you know, a certain level of respect intact. CGI Brett giving respect to Mick and Natalie makes sense considering the little we saw of him showed that he valued the way they played over the way Russell did. It is now day 39 and they all have a toast with Russell saying, may the best man win at the end. And then in a secret scene, they changed their merged tribe's name from Iga to Foa Foa. But that isn't all. Russell goes full blown villain on Natalie when... They're gonna say I took you the whole way. And they're gonna say, you couldn't have made it without Russell. What you gonna say? Yeah, it's in God's God. hands at this point. If I'm not meant to win, that's fine. I'm happy I made it to the third. <laughs> you see, you yeah, ain't been a... thinking about your speech too much Russell, then. Guess what? Look who I lined with from the first day. Oh, you? so you saying you set up the line? No, I'm no, just I'm saying. No, I'm being them. I'm, okay. If you want second place, you have to do better than that. Mm. The nice guy and the nice girl. Have they outwitted me? Have they mm. outplayed me? If they have, then give them the money, because they deserve it. Don't make me make you look stupid on the jury. This game ain't over, girl. I'll put you in the jury. Ease up. I think there may be a little bit of strategy involved to wrestle, making us feel like we're not gonna win or that we don't have a chance, but I have uh, news for him. I'm not gonna give up, and I'll just explain to the jury, I don't work the same way as wrestle. That would clearly not have worked for me. The girls that were aggressive, they got eliminated early. My strategy was to be myself, and at the end of the day, you know, I wasn't out to get anybody or make anybody look bad. Russell made it clear he was okay with making people look bad. I'll tell you how I think the vote is gonna go. Jambo, Dave, Brett, John, Eric, that's five. I am another millionaire. Wow, just wow. He doesn't need anyone else to vote for him. Oh really? Well, in the final Ponderosa video for the season, we see that Dave says, I'm actually up in the air on who to vote for our final tribal. And speaking of that, It is time, Final Tribal Council, and uh, I think Natalie has already won. I don't think she has to do anything at Final Tribal except be nice. Don't believe me? Let's recap the jurors with what we know about each of them in the order they were booted. Eric is kind of a mystery as we have seen him be excited by Russell's play at Tribal, but that kind of stopped after episode 10. Kelly is BFFs with Laura, and she was clearly upset with how Russell treated her and played the game. Laura was obviously friends with Natalie on a real level, and uh, Russell lied to her and manipulated her multiple times, and she knew it. John is a wild card, and I'm not sure who he likes at this point. Dave Ball has also given us not much of anything except me looking at those pictures on the phone and Natalie hugging him while Russell's looking creepy, but that's not really much to go on. Monica is BFFs with Laura as well and clearly didn't like Russell. Shambo is BFFs with Russell and didn't connect with anyone else. Jason made it pretty clear what kind of game he values and feels burned by Russell who promised him final two all season and then uh, gets cut before the final two. And of course, CGI Brett became genuine friends with Natalie. By my count, I think we have Kelly, Laura, Monica, and CGI Brett all voting for Natalie, that's four. Shambo voting for Russell, that's one. And Jason either voting for Mick or Natalie. I don't think he's voting for for Russell and Eric, John, and Dave Ball being wild cards. They could vote for anyone. Based on what we have seen so far, including the main show, secret scenes, extended final words, and Ponderosa videos, let's see how this plays out. Let's watch Natalie try to win this thing. Her opening speech is mostly about how she has grown as a person and how she has been humbled playing this game. It's okay, I guess. However, humble is a word CGI Brett likes. She does compliment the jury too, which is always a nice touch. Jason is the first member of the jury to speak and he reveals to everyone that Russell is a millionaire, in case they didn't know. Mick is a doctor, so he's not poor. And Natalie had to quit her pharmaceutical job to be here. Shambo is second and she just lets them all have it. Mick, wow. Dude, you have got to be kidding me. In a word, would you agree that your overall gameplay could be called feckless. I don't know what feckless is. Natalie. <laughs> okay, we'll do the you. word that just is resonating in my mind, coattail. How do you think America is gonna perceive you sitting up there in the final three? Give it to me, Natalie. I had enough intuition to notice that girl that goes out aggressive, target, gone. 
Marisa, and Betsy. That's not smart. I'm calling just major BS on your sentence that you just hit me with. I'm like cracking up and said like you have no idea. Okay. The jig is up. No way in God's green earth you're getting my vote. Thanks, Shambo. By the way, feckless means lacking initiative or strength or just being irresponsible, in case you were wondering. CGI Brett is third and he only talks to Mick and that says, what would we do if we spent a whole day together? Basically, we learned that Mick knows nothing about CGI Brett. They did not connect beyond a surface level. Interesting, interesting. Kelly is fourth and she says she relates to Natalie, but. I think in the beginning, we were perceived as being very similar. You know, we're both a little bit underestimated. I had to rely on myself. I saw you always turn to call help, whether it be these two or someone else in every challenge. It wasn't because I had no fight. I've given this 100%. Yeah, maybe I'm not as good at some of the physical challenges as some other people. I think everybody outweighed me, but I did do things on my own, and I'll tell you, I got better throughout the game to believe in myself. Monica is fifth, and she says Mick and Natalie played fair, honest games, and uh, Russell, are you fair and honest in real life? And Russell's like, of course I am. And Monica's like, I don't believe you. And then when she talks to Mick, it leads to him and Russell having a fight while Natalie just keeps her mouth shut. Dave is the sixth juror and he asks, I do have one thing. I'm curious, I'm just gonna ask everybody, what do you think your chances are tonight? I came in here with a lot larger percentage, but now it went down to about 55%. My chances are after this, maybe 25%. I'm gonna go with maybe, maybe a 30. 30%? 30 to 40% chance. Right on. Good game, Mom. Thank you. You're welcome. Notice how Natalie's the only one he compliments of the three. Hmm. Laura is the seventh juror and nothing new is learned here as she asked Russell what he did to get rid of her in the game. Kind of a nothing question. John is eighth and Mick says, hey John, there's no one else here who's more of a stand-up dude than I am. Give me your vote. John then asks Natalie about what she did under Russell's wing and she reinforces what her strategy is about the aggressive women being targeted. I mean, just look at Laura and John is unimpressed. And finally, we get to our last juror in Eric. Russell, this hurts me. We got nothing in common. You played an unethical game, admittedly played an unethical game, but you sit there proud of it. Natalie, people will call you weak. People will say that you are undeserving. Why are those characteristics any less admirable as lying, cheating, and stealing? Why does he get a free pass, but your wrong way of playing is admonished? You would say that you are probably the least deserving of the title of sole survivor. But maybe, just maybe, in an environment filled with arrogance, delusional entitlement, maybe the person who thinks that she's least deserving is probably the most. You got my vote. I hope you get four more. Congratulations. I think we all know who he is voting for and frankly, he's right. All you need to do is reach the end and convince your jury to vote for you. That's all Survivor is. There's nothing else to it. No amount of calling yourself Picasso, having the show saying you're amazing in their recaps and giving you more confessionals than the next three people combined mean you deserve to win. Reach the end. Please your jury. That's all the show's ever been about. So at the live reunion, Jeff reads the final vote count. First vote. Rattley. Russell. Russell. Natalie. 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 The winner of Survivor Samoa. In a rare move, I want to do an epilogue to cover the post-game shenanigans of Russell and Natalie because Russell doesn't get it. He has, at this point, played two seasons of Survivor and he doesn't get how Natalie won, as we see at the live reunion. But do you agree that, that this game does come down to getting a vote? Did Natalie have a better social game? I had Jason, I had Mick, Natalie, Shambo. They trusted me. That's why they stayed with me. I feel like that I played the best strategic game in history. There's no regrets how I played the game. I don't regret anything that I did. Because, I, I mean, leave it to me to say, one of those dumbass girls beat your ass for a million dollars. 
Get to the end, please your jury. That's it. Russell never cared about the jury, and it shows. Need some more proof? Well, despite winning fan favorite and getting $100,000, which only boosts his ego up more than he needs, he taunts Jason by saying, here, Jason, I got a pair of socks to make up for the pair that I burned. And as he goes to give it to him, he throws it in the fire because why not? This reminds me of Boston Rob and Amber, minus the romance, the uh, Russell Natalie thing, especially since both Boston Rob and Russell have a question for the winner about what they care about the most. Boston Rob, of course, proposed marriage to Amber, but Russell asks, All I want is the title of So Survive. <laughs> I will pay you $10,000 for the title. I'm gonna decline Russell's offer in order to win the title of Soul Survivor. No, it's priceless. You have to get the majority wow. of the vote. All right, Russell, I would've taken that money. I'll call you Soul Survivor for 100 grand the rest of your life. But now to put the cherry on top, the next day, Russell and Natalie appear on TV for her to get her million dollar check and look at his face while it happens. I know the man, uh, the man right next to you, Russell, this has gotta make you just seethe knowing that you were so close, you were the odds on favorite yet you're the guy that's looking at the one million dollar check rather than cashing it yeah it's uh i don't think she deserves it that's my opinion uh i think the world doesn't think she deserves it because you know what she didn't even get uh, in the top three for fan favorite ultimately uh the person that wins and deserves to win is the person that gets the majority of the jury vote yeah. you know, and, you know, and you, know so, when, you know when you play a football game and you're the quarterback to the football game i'm throwing all the touchdown passes right yeah she wasn't even on the field yeah she was my cheerleader well guess so, what well guess what she, guess what she, i'm gonna she, laugh she, all the way to the she, bank so. <laughs> So let's break this down. How is Natalie White as a character? Kind and sweet. Aside from avoiding conflict when people asked if they were going to be voted off, which only happened in secret scenes, she was sweet as could be and tried to make friends with everyone. She was the moral antithesis to the guy she aligned with. And frankly, nothing is more poetic than the humble, nice person beating the arrogant jerk at the end. Out of 18 character moments shown on the show, 16 were heroic and two were villainous, making Natalie White a hero character on Survivor Samoa. Now, how is Natalie White as a strategist? Natalie needed Russell. Don't get me wrong, if she enters the merge with Liz instead of Russell, meaning they vote off Russell in episode seven, I don't think the Foa Foa Four stood a chance. Natalie could not have done this by herself. However, she took advantage of a situation and played her cards correctly, while all the other women he wanted to align with were eliminated by him and his paranoid anger. Natalie took the opportunity to befriend the jury and at no point did it seem like pandering because she was being genuine while there were chaotic forces all around her distracting everyone from her meek but effective gameplay. Out of 37 strategic moments shown on the show, 30 were smart and 7 were dumb making Natalie White a smart strategist on Survivor Samoa. Thank you for watching and doubly thanks for liking and subscribing. See you all next time.